Kickoff. Evans, Adonis, and Greg Turner are deep, and we are back to action. Evans Adonis is knocked down right around the 20 yard line. And we're back to action here. 1451 to go in the third. David Kaplan and the coach, Bob Kamel. Kenny McReynolds on the sideline. Todd Armour doing fabulous work as our spotter up here in the booth. Now we'll get a chance to look at what the Salukis did defensively at the halftime, the adjustments they made. And, and in this series, we'll see what the Northern, excuse me, Northern Illinois Huskies do from an uh, adjustment standpoint from the offensive side of the football. My guess is this. They're going to continue to run the football and mix it up with a few play-action passes. Montel Clanton is the deep man. He will get the handoff, and Clanton will be knocked down right around the 23-yard line. You know, since the interception, that was returned by Luster for the touchdown, Dan Nicholson, 10 for 10 for 110 and two touches. Very impressive. You know, and that's a sign of maturity. Throwing the football away, and Aaron McCoy having to go for six in the other direction, and coming back and building upon, you know, basically adversity. I think it showed great maturity as the game has progressed. Second down, Nicholson going to throw short. Finds his man, Greg Turner. Turner knocked down at the 43. That'll be in Northern Illinois. First down, Justin Thurston, the linebacker, made the tackle. Well, he hits the, he hits the flat, the weak flat. And he's got enough of a cushion right there. He looks right at this ball being thrown in one place. A little bit of a stop pattern as he goes to outside. Again, put that football away there, young man. Put that football away. Know where you're at on the field. Look at Nicholson. I mean, he's unflappable. Hands off to Clanton, makes one man miss, and really, that's going to be a two-yard game. But guess what, Bob? That's a big-time play because it should have been a two-yard loss. Well, you know, we, we used to be able, we, we always said if the, if the play was a broken play by the offensive line, if you could make one guy miss, you had yourself a pretty good running back in that situation. Now I'm seeing guys making two and three guys miss. Good job. Good job. You know, Michigan today loses 39-7 at home to Oregon. They lose to Appalachian State last week. Does that loss dim a little bit because of what happened today to the Appalachian State loss? Well, the fact of the matter is, is Michigan should never lose to Appalachian State at home in the big house. Say what you want. Should never, ever lose that football game. You know, to come back and lose this week, you know, there has to be a lot of soul searching. Well, there has to be a lot of soul searching going on in the Michigan football game. I know for the Michigan State football these two past performances are unacceptable. Clanton is out. Justin Anderson is back in as the tail of the tandem. And it is a second, excuse me, a third and one situation for Northern Illinois. Nicholson rolling to his right, looking, throws. Outstanding catch. Big time play by Brandon Beal. Watch this catch. It's a great catch by Brandon Beal. But watch the touch yet again by Nicholson. Play action fake. Rolls out to his right. Throws basically off his back leg. Good job of taking the football at its highest point. Look who's covering him, though. A linebacker. That's a great read by Nicholson. That's a mismatch. Trevor Moe was the man in coverage, but what a great throw. What a great catch by Beal. Hand off Justin Anderson. Picks his way. Knocked down at the 30-yard line. The gain of four. Bring up a second and six. Play calling. Great rhythm in the play calling. I like it. There, there, there's no hesitation. He gets the play. And the other thing I like, David, I like a huddle. I, I do not like the no huddle offense. A huddle is a meeting where you exchange information and ask questions. It's a meeting. I like a huddle. Then come up to the football and run the play. Justin Anderson 
picks his way. It'll be a third and three. Let me ask you this, Bob. There are coaches. Kenny Walker made that tackle. There are coaches, the late Randy Walker at Northwestern. His philosophy was there will be times we will be out talented. I'm not going to let you call your defense and get things set. I'm going to come right back to the line with the senior quarterback. He felt he could run his offense more effectively against you. Well, if he, th you know, gosh, Randy Walker, talk about not only a great football coach, a great father, a great husband, a great human being. The best. A huge, huge loss. And, and I had the, the pleasure and the honor of coaching with Randy. He made it, you know, you talked to Cody Randy. But in this situation, Joe Novak doesn't have to beat. He's not a less talented football team than the team plays. Hey, I mean, he played Iowa last week to play some Big Ten games. And, you know, here's the other thing. You do what you know best. And they do what they know best, and that's fine. Justin Anderson out of the backfield. He's had a huge night. Receiving from his tailback spot, Nicholson finds him, and that's another Husky first down. David, he has completed passes to eight different receivers. That's called distribution. That is the way you play this type of football, the way Joe Novak wants to play football, and I'll tell you, that's tough on the Saluki defense. Hand off Justin Anderson. He will be stood up, and this will be going nowhere. That one will be a loss on the play, I believe. Clayton Johnson, the 5'10", 190-pound junior safety from Miami, Florida, came up and made a real good one-on-one -on -one Well, You're talking about a young guy, Clayton Johnson, who was all day Brower County. I mean, if you're not a great athlete, you don't make that all-star team. Good job by him, a great analysis, coming up and making the play. So getting back to the huddle and the no huddle. You know, the, the no huddle, it is effective, I mean, for some people. Myself, personally, as a football team, I like a huddle. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Nicholson looking, throwing, and it is caught by Britt Davis in traffic. Great throw, great catch. Easy for a guy that coached at Northern Illinois and Notre Dame and Michigan. Get all the horses. Watch Britt Davis on this play. I talk about coming back for the football. You have to come back for the football. Why? Because it causes separation between you and the defenders. I really like this Britt Davis kid. David, we've seen him block. We've seen him catch pass out route. We've seen him good stop. Player. He is really a good player. Quarterback in high school. Honor roll student in high school, Riverside Brookfield. Nicholson looks, throws, finds Anderson out of the backfield. Knocked down at the three. Knocked out of bounds at the three. What you're seeing here from the offense, Northern Illinois offense, is they're going to continue hitting the flat, the strong flat and the weak flat, until the Salukis make an adjustment. And they have it. That, that basically, that kind of a safe pass, this is an elongated handoff in a lot of ways. Great high percentage pass. Good job of calling players. Keep calling the, the, the flat passes until they come up. Then play action fake, single, go downfield with the ball. Folks, a few years ago, my guy here, Bob Kamel, named the best recruiter in college football. Put together a number one class nationally on more than one occasion. Dan Nicholson, hands. Justin Anderson crashes toward the goal line. No signal yet. They're going to say he is short. Tackle inside the one. When you go and recruit, let's use the Jordan Center as an example. I mean, you were able to recruit number one class at Michigan at Notre Dame. You helped Northwestern turn things around, and you did a wonderful job here. This program got going when you were here in the 80s as you brought in players like Ron Delisi and others. Marshall Taylor. What do you sell? Do you just sell the program? Do you sell the school? Do you sell relationships? Because you're as effervescent a guy as you'll find. Well, after this play, we can talk a little bit about that. And that's that in the end zone. is in the end zone. Touchdown, Justin Anderson. His third TD of the evening. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. You know, you talk about a back that has vision that sees the whole field. This play it was a great defensive push. Play side by the Saluki defensive line. He stutter stepped. He was patient. He took the football in the other direction. Outstanding job. There's the cutback. There it is right there. And look at his pad level. What do I mean by pad level? Lower your pads, become your own blocker. Snap, kick. It flies toward the Jordan Center. Up on the deck, and it's 28-7. The Husky offense in high gear through the air and on the ground.
Call O to the guaranteed lowest price on LASIK in the Tri-State Service Area. From Marriott Eye Centers, get the clear vision you want with standard or custom view LASIK. And we're the only local providers of Intralase, the safe no blade LASIK procedure. Get maximum vision correction at guaranteed lowest prices. Clear vision at last. LASIK vision correction at Marion Eye Centers and Optical. My hip was preventing me from doing the things I love to do. So I went to see my doctor. He sent me to the Southern Illinois Orthopedic Center. Their tests indicated that I needed a hip replacement. As IOC doctors and staff provided my diagnosis, surgery, and rehabilitation, the whole experience exceeded my expectations. I love playing with my grandkids. State-of-the-art orthopedic care. Close to home. Game plays, 78 yards, they ripped off 604 off the clock. Anderson did the honors, a one-yard touchdown run. Bobby, let's take a look at some of the plays. Well, you talk about a scoring drive, and they're mixing it up. The perfect pass to the outside shoulder. Here he comes back again, straight drop back. I talk about the weak flat. I see a well-coached receiver coming back with the football. Now we see to the strong flat that the Salukis have given up. Take it, keep going after it. Here's the last play, shoulder pad into the end zone. Magnificent play calling. There is Justin Anderson, three touchdowns on the evening. And you, and you see Marcus Perez, number five, who Kenny told us earlier would not be back. He is in a, show, a sling. Looks like he's got some shoulder problems. After this kick, we'll hear from Kenny with an update on Montel Clinton. Nendix kick. A high driving kick comes down at the goal line. Southern Illinois is looking to see if they can get something rolling, and they will start first and 10. I think he stepped out of bounds right around the 31 yard line. That was Craig Turner, and I think Nendick made the tackle. Craig Turner, the man on the return, down to the field. Here's Kenny McReynolds. And David Montel Clanton, the outstanding tailback for NIU. They're working on his right knee. He will not be back in the game today. I'm looking at the trainers right now. He looks like he's in a lot of pain, but he will not be back today. And as you mentioned, Perez has his shoulder in a sling. He also is out for the remainder of the game. But Clanton will not be back tonight. All right, thank you, Kenny. Great work down there on the sidelines. So a couple of injuries for NIU to key guys. 28 to 7 though our score Phil Brown comes in from his linebacker spot to make the tackle on Deji Kareem take a look at the SIU stats last week against Quincy they put big numbers up Bob. 480 yards against Quincy University out of Quincy Illinois you know, you, you, you mentioned Nedick on that kickoff he really took a shot David when he made that tackle Good inside run there by the Salukis. Starting to get a little bit of a push up front. You know, one of the things with, with, it, with it, uh, Coach Kill football team, trust me, Jerry Kill is a great motivator. He's a fine football coach. He's been to the playoffs on many occasions. They will play this football game right down to the final whistle as tough as they did earlier. Now, at the 35-yard line at the nor on the Northern Illinois bench, we're going to try and get you a shot of it. Tim McCarthy limped off. He is being attended to by three members of the training staff, and he looks to be in a bit of pain as SIU rips off another big run. You know, he'll be sorely missed. Daisy Kareem, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. I, mean, if I know Tim McCarthy's out of the game right now. I'm running the football right at you until I can see that you can stop the inside running game. I mentioned he's the heart of the Northern Illinois defense. You, you mentioned any great defense, somebody has to be the heart of that defense. Tim McCarthy plays that way. Yep, he is, and you can tell, a lot of pain over there on the sidelines. Phil Voorhees and his staff works on his... I think it's his right leg. I cannot be sure. We're a bit screened on that play. The Husky defense stiffens there. Kareem, the ball carrier, and a host of red shirts came rolling over, led by Melvin Rice and Josh Allen. Josh Allen exploded the lead block and forced the ball carrier to change direction just a little bit. And when he does that, that buys time for the rest of the defense. Nice job, Josh Allen. 5'11", 211 pound junior, as you mentioned earlier, North Chicago High School. 
big weight room guy. He'll love that move for sure. Nick Hill, senior quarterback, looks, throws, nearly intercepted. Nearly picked off by Brandon Feist. Brandon Feist out of Lyons Township High School. Absolutely. You know, you talk about a guy right there knowing when to go up in the air. When do you continue to pursue? Good athleticism. Great vertical here, David. Look at that. Oh, he's just got Great he went vertical. With two hands. Great vertical. <laughs> Honor roll student at LT High School. Honor roll student. And you know what? Joe Novak looks for those things when he recruits. Third and eight. Hill. Pressure. Red shirts all over him. Completes the pass. But that will be short of a first down. It'll bring up a fourth and call it two and a half. Larry Warner made the catch. 99, a big D tackle. The junior out of Hilbert, Wisconsin, Craig Rush, made the play. This is a what I would call a want-to type of play. You've got Rush coming upfield, going to make the sack. He reads the play, turns around, and gets in pursuit. Big points in the meetings tomorrow. Salukis are going for it here, David. Fourth down situation. Hill looking, looking, throws down the field, has got his man, and that is a Southern Illinois touchdown. Big play on fourth down, and they stay alive in this game. Alan Turner, the catch, and the touchdown. Great play action, great play action, great execution of play action. Throws the linebackers, throws the corners, looks for the ball, throws the ball into duress between two defenders. They had a high-low type of, of, of defense going there. Inside now, combo, what have you. Put the football right on the money, but what the difference was was the fake and the play action. Seven plays, 64 yards, took 252. It's a 26-yard touchdown strike. Hill to Allen Turner, number four. Senior out of El Paso, Illinois. Wide out, finds Pater, extra point is good. And so we are now a 14-point game, NIU 28, Southern Illinois 14, 549 left in the third. Presenting the Opportunity Through Excellence campaign for Southern. I got here and I just understand the term of school spirit now. Maybe because I got to pick my school and I love it so much that I really have a lot of school spirit. The campaign is so important because the students really deserve the best that this university can offer, and we're so thankful for that support. Information available at siuf.org slash campaign. 710 Bookstore is your one stop for another great season of Saluki Athletics. 710 Bookstore is a place for Saluki fans of all ages with a winning selection of sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats, banners, bumper stickers, and more. A sea of maroon to choose from, enough to prove you're a number one fan. 710 Bookstore has been a proud supporter of Saluki Athletics for over 35 years and has the latest and officially licensed SIU and printed clothing. With plenty of free parking and convenient hours, 710 Bookstore is your place to load up on your Saluki maroon. At the game, on the strip, or online at 710.com. World Grand Champion Barbecue is just down the street at 17th Street Barn Grill on the Hill in Marion. If you love barbecue as much as we do, then 17th Street is the place. Come on in for our famous slow-cooked ribs, barbecue steaks, seafood, chicken, burger, salads, and homemade desserts. You'll want to try everything. We have catering, too. Want it to go? Just call ahead and we'll have your food ready. Come on in. We're waiting for you. At 17th Street Bar and Grill, things are really cooking. Illinois, 14, let's take a look, Bob. Three looks at the touchdown. Well, as I mentioned before, it was a great play action. It froze the corners, froze the linebackers, permitted the receiver to get in, in that depth position between the free safety and the linebacker drop. Then they in, inside out in what we call combo coverage. Great throw, great catch, good blocking by the fullback, well executed play. And in reality, they're right back in this game. You know, we saw a shot of the sideline. You remember Carl Mock? the outstanding player for the Baltimore Colts. Houston play. Oilers. Houston Oilers. You know, he's back at his, his alma mater, uh, 1969 graduate, and I'll tell you something, he adds an awful lot to that coaching staff in regard to experience. 
Yeah, if we could get a shot at Carl, I mean, it's going to be hard to find him down there. He's a big man. A big man. I mean, a very large man. Do you know that he was on the freshman basketball team at Southern? And his teammate on the freshman team, Walt Clyde Frazier, one of the greats of all time. I've seen your Walt Clyde Frazier gym shoes from time to time. Dude. Yes, I do have those with the big They're, they're, they're back in vogue again. That's exactly. They're the, back in the, vogue. Uh, what did they call those? Suede. Suede. <laughs> exactly. Suede. Here's Nicholson. I mean, here he is right now on the sideline with the football team, showing a lot of great leadership. He gets the play from Coach Whitkey, Roy Whitkey up in the stands, uh, up in the press box, brings it down on the field. This young guy, I mean, as I mentioned before, his, the maturity that he's exhibited through the course of this entire game, I think is something very special. Justin Anderson is the single back set for Northern Illinois. They're gonna run the football. They hand to Anderson, picks his way. Solid run, big gain. He'll pick up six, maybe seven on first down for Anderson tonight. 104 total yards he now has. Rushing 19 yards after that carry and receiving seven catches, 85 and two touches. Career high, three total TDs in the football game. Well, you know, Montel Clinton comes out of the football game. One guy goes in, one guy has to step up. This young guy has stepped up. Great job there, seeing nothing play side. Pumped his feet just a couple of times, patted his feet, cut the ball back to the outside. Anderson again. Anderson knocked down, but enough for a first down. He's out to the 40-yard line. Ryan Patton came out from his linebacker spot sophomore out of West Frankfort, Illinois, number 43, made the tackle. Well, with the Huskers right now, but just keep moving the sticks. Keep moving the sticks. Keep getting the offensive linemen, you know, the offensive linemen love to run block. They love to run block. They want to get a hat on a hat. They want to move those defenders back. Let them keep running the football. What a fine rhythm they have right now. Hand it off, Anderson, big run. Good burst across the 50 to the 46 yard line. Another NIU first down, Rogers the tackle. Take a look at this run, Bobby. This well, is explosive. What, what this is, is is just a little bit of a straight handoff with some trap blocking, a big lateral crease in the defense. He knows when to accelerate. I mean, they are really, right now, they, they have really got it cranking with this running game. And again, you know, I mentioned new football coach, Harold Etheridge, North Texas uh, State guy. I guess it's North Texas University right now. First year, great job. Hand off Anderson, turns the corner. Anderson makes a man miss. And a nearly another Northern Illinois first down. Let's go down to the field. Kenny McReynolds with an update on linebacker Tim McCarthy. Kenny? Yeah, David, linebacker Tim McCarthy is out for the game. The injured right knee. They, they put ice on the knee, David, but it was not a good sign. When he went off the bench, they had to help him. He did not put any weight on that knee, but he's out for the game. They don't know the extent of the injury, but he could not put weight on it, and he will not be back tonight. You do not like to see them cutting the tape off of a brand new pair of crutches. That's not good when he is the heart and soul of your defense. Montel Clanton showing support over there, number 20. It's called being a teammate, and that's what's great about this sport. Nicholson going down the field, has got a man! Just missed finding Britt Davis. That would have been a touchdown. Just missed it. I like to call David on first and ten. Great play action. One of the things right now, two dying arts in football. One tackling, two faking. Nicholson, great execution. Great stop and go right here by Britt Davis. Just a little bit over -throwing. Just a shade over -throwing. You know, that's all involved. We talk, talk about execution, blocking, faking, that little stutter step and then taking off down the sideline. This is a well-coached football team. I can't emphasize that enough. Chad Spann, number three, and in the backfield, he gets the handoff. It's Spann rumbles to the 31-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third, and they'll call it about five. Don't think that playing behind Garrett Wood hasn't been a huge advantage for these young running backs. Because I see, and now they're their own guys, I mentioned earlier, especially Montel Clinton. But you know what? You see like abilities. They watch and they learn. 
he was a leader. They watch and they learn. He was a great football player. I see a lot of him in some of these younger guys. Anderson in motion, empty backfield on third and five. Nicholson, time to throw, looking, finds Anderson, and he is going to come up short. Real nice job by Jerry Kill, Southern Illinois Saluki defense, Bob. They did a good job stringing it. They did a good job of pursuing the football, getting a great break on the football. One of the things that I'm very impressed with the Saluki is as I analyze them and then watching this game, they have really overall good teams. Craig Turner and Chauncey Mixon both in there on the tackle. And now Justin Anderson limping to the sideline. I mean, a host of leg injuries for NIU tonight. You know, the fact of the matter, though, is with the score 28-14, 242 left in the third quarter, it is much too early for substitution, much too early. And that's where these young guys have to step up. The backup guys, tell guys, be ready to play because you're always one play away from being in the football game. Here's the All-American kicker, Chris Nendick, from 46 yards away, and he got it. Yes, he does. He soars it through. That would have been good, Bob from 55. He absolutely pounded that through. Played the wind, and the Huskies have three more. It's 31-14. driving machine is now open in Southern Illinois. It's the all-new standalone state-of-the-art Newbold BMW Center in O'Fallon, Illinois. Our exclusive new BMW facility is designed for expanded sales, service, and inventory to provide you with the ultimate car buying experience. Stop by today for your own personalized guest tour. Newbold BMW in O'Fallon, Illinois. Step up and drive. The styles say you. The prices say now. The Thomasville Labor Day weekend sale is the biggest event of the season. Up to 50% savings store-wide on all your favorite Thomasville designs, plus exciting new collections. Thomasville has all the looks you love to live, relax, and entertain. Hurry in. It only happens once a year. Six months free financing at Coleman Rose in West Frankfurt. in DeKalb after Chris Nendick bangs through a 46-yard field goal. The NIU Alumni Association scoring drive, eight plays, 44 yards, and it took 311 to get the three points off the leg of Chris Nendick, one of the best kickers in the country. Chris Nendick, a great kicker, as you mentioned, one of the best in the country. Never take for granted the term that we use called the operation. And that's getting the team out there, getting them lined up, getting a good snap, getting a good hold, getting good protection. Huge. The operation is critically important. Again, another phase of the Northern Illinois football team that has been very well coached. End over end kick comes down at the nine. Well, that ball, I thought, did the ball come out? No, it did not. No, it did not. Craig Turner was airborne. I thought the ball might have come flying out of there. But take a look at the replay on the field goal. How he plays the win and brings it in. Look how deep that thing goes. I mean, that's a good seven, eight yards through the uplands. I believe that's called a draw. That's exactly a draw. right. If you have a draw or do you have a slice? I have a draw on my golf draw. swing, but sometimes it turns into an ugly hook. I'm just happy when the golf ball gets in the air. Deji Kareem in, but Nick Hill's going to throw. He's going up top, and that ball's knocked away. Real good defense. It was, they were looking for Luke Sherrill, and Melvin Rice broke it up with a real nice play. You're going to see a little bit of a, of a blitz package here by Northern Illinois. Just a little bit of a safe blitz. Young man right there. Gets his hand in, punches it out. Good job by the wide receiver getting up there at the high point, but an outstanding play. Outstanding play by Melvin Rice. Getting the hand with knowing where, you know, people, why don't you look back? Why don't you look back? If you look back too soon, you don't know where the receiver is. There's that fine point of getting that hand where that's when you watch the receiver's eyes. When his eyes get big, put your hand out. Real good play by the guys in red. Blow that play up, led by number two. Melvin Rice. Daisy Kareem was the man with the mail. 
Melvin Rice led all of his buddies to blow that play up. Watch number two, nearly a fumble on the handoff, and there comes Melvin Rice. Look at his legs, look at him bring his legs. That's textbook tackling by the young man from Chicago, Morgan. And I'll tell you, the other guy who made a real nice play, didn't get the tackle, but slowed it up, John Tranchatella, number 42, the linebacker. Great pursuit by the Husky defense. Third and 11. Nick Hill looks, throws, finds his man. Well short of a first down. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Josh Allen, part of the gang, making the tackle on Luke Sherrill. One of the things to hallmark, I mentioned pursuit of great defense. The other thing, you always coach your defense. Keep the football inside and in front of the defense. Damian Sherman, actually. They have two number 89s on the Southern Illinois roster. One a linebacker, one a wide receiver. They must have a lot of retired numbers. So, hey, you know, don't take anything away from this movie as far as what they're doing with their facilities. They have a $20 million pledge by the city of Carbondale to improve their football facilities. And they're really excited about that also, which is going to include a huge renovation for the stadium. Deep punt and nearly a big tackle that could have led to a fumble. We have a flag flying. Rick Burgess came down there and was the man that nearly blew that play up. Rick Burgess, the starting fullback. David, remember this, at the subdivision level, and it's hard for me to say, they only have 63 scholarships as opposed to 85 at the Division I level. So you've got a lot of guys that have to be on special teams and things like that. Greg Turner, the man who returns the punts, and then there's the tackle, and they get him right there by the face mask. That is the, not the garden variety five yard, that's the 15 yard. Grab the face mask, flagrant, and that will give Northern really pretty good field position, Bob, when they could have been pinned way back. You know, it's another one of those situations where you have to be disciplined. Rick Burgess didn't need to do that. The play was made, the play was over. He'd already done his job. Absolutely, as I mentioned, he's a starting fullback going down on a kickoff, 63 scholarships as opposed to 85. So Northern Illinois down to their third back of the night, Chad Spann getting a lot of time here after both Montel Clinton and Justin Anderson left with injuries. You look at the number of injuries they've dealt with tonight, two backs, Tim McCarthy, their linebacker, and Marcus Perez, a starting wide receiver. That is not good. No, not at all, especially you get into league play, the Mid-American Conference next week against Eastern Michigan. Correct. This will end the third quarter of action as they count it down here in DeKalb. And we will go to the fourth quarter with NIU 17 up on SIU 31 to 14. There is Tim McCarthy. Not a happy camper, he is done for the night. We'll be right back. Great selection in Southern Illinois. We've combined our Carbondale and Marion pre-owned inventory to serve you better. With over 150 pre-owned vehicles to choose from at the all-new Iconda Used Car Superstore. Right now, Ike's price on new automatic Accords is just $19.1 and Odysseys are only $23.9. We carry all makes, all models, and all for less. So visit the new Iconda Used Car Superstore today. The Southern Illinois University Foundation presenting the Opportunity Through Excellence campaign for Southern. The purpose of the campaign is to benefit everyone within the system. That would include scholarships for students. It would include funding for faculty. It would include bricks and mortar. And the only way to do that is to make certain that the alumni know that now is the time. Information available at siuf.org slash campaign. When Katie injured herself at recess, we took her to the emergency room. We were told she needed surgery and that we should see an orthopedic surgeon. That's when I learned about Southern Illinois Orthopedic Center. Katie was seen the next day, SAOC performed her surgery that same day, and we were back home that evening. Katie received the special attention that children need. She's back to being a kid again. State-of-the-art orthopedic care, close to home. football coach here at Northern Illinois. 
done a wonderful job building this program from the ground up and his Huskies a 31-14 lead right now as we start the fourth quarter of action. We're going to be joined by a couple of special guests here in a moment. And there's a football that's loose. And let's see who comes up with it. Span put it on the carpet. Who recovers is the question. And it looks like Southern Illinois has recovered the fumble. Huskies down to their third back of the evening after both Clanton and Anderson went down. And there comes the football flying out. One of the things and in the huddle, you have to talk to a young running back. Hang on to the football. Tuck the football away. You get into harm's way, both hands on the football. It's a shame. Chris Acevedo on that play. Acevedo, great, great block for a big guy in space. Hate to see that happen. Now you start talking about sudden change. Denny Dornbus knows about sudden change. They're yelling sudden change, sudden change. Now you see if you can't get a, a, a stop by the defense. They grade these things, sudden change. Deji Kareem carries it out to the 45 yard line. Big gain, very close to an SIU first down. Now you're gonna come up stout. What I mean by sudden change, David, is when the, the offense turns the football over, be it a fumble, be it an interception. The entire defensive side of the football is yelling sudden change. In other words, get out on the field, be ready to make a stop. You grade how many sudden change stops that you have if you're a great defensive coordinator. And I think Denny Dornboss is a really good defensive coordinator. Kareem dragged down by Melvin Rice. But Kareem carrying the mail so far here, Bob. He's done a nice job in limited work tonight. Well, you know, one of the things you see with him, you've got to be ready all the time. You know, I know, David, you're a baseball aficionado. You know, you come off the bench, you know, that's tough duty. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready to step in at any point in time, get into the ebb and flow of the game, and make plays. Deji Kareem is out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He's a 5'8", 205-pound junior. They'll hand it to him again. And again, he rips off a chunk of yardage, and it is enough for another IU first down. You have to get a little bit stouter up front. These linebackers have to start. You know, this is where you see the loss of Tim McCarthy. When you're able to attack the heart of the defense, and that heart of the defense is on the sideline and watching the game, that's when a prudent offensive coordinator says, hey, they've got a substitute in there. Let's go after this guy. Let's chase him around until he proves that he can make plays. Out of the gun, Nick Hill, senior quarterback, the lefty, looking, looking. Pressure, it's gonna head to the sidelines. He's ushered out by Josh Allen. Credit, number great nine. coverage there, David. Credit, great coverage and great pursuit, keeping the football inside and in front of them, even with a scrambling quarterback. We do have a couple of special guests here up in our palatial television booth. Jim Phillips, the phenomenal Dr. Jim Phillips, the phenomenal athletic director here at Northern Illinois, and Jeffrey Jordan, he of the Jordan Center that we got a chance to see earlier in the ball game. And Jim, your Huskies dealing with some injuries tonight, but so far in command and playing pretty good. Well, good evening, uh, David, and wonderful crowd, and a really a monumental moment for our institution. When you look at what we open today, thanks to Jeffrey and Kimberly Jordan, words could not really put into uh, context the magnitude that that building's gonna have for our student athletes, our 17 programs and 467 student athletes. It, I toured it and I honestly, I turned to you and I said, <laughs> all this red around here, am I in Nebraska? I've never seen anything like that. It's an amazing place. It is an amazing place, but you gotta have amazing people that support a dream like that. Low snap, Nick Hill. Flares it out, and that is going to be short by about six yards. Larry Warner made the catch coming out of the backfield. Now, Jeffrey Jordan, the building has your name on it, you and your wife. You played football here. You live in the area in Schaumburg. Your thoughts on seeing that building with your name on it and what it will do for your institution? Uh, my name on it isn't the, the important part of it. Uh, I think what it's going to do for the institution, what I've already seen it do for the kids, for the coaches and the alumni is, uh, is unbelievably gratifying. 
A fourth and seven situation. The crowd rises as one here at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium on a fourth and seven. Nick Hill looking, looking, throws, and it is tipped and caught, but it will be short of a first down, and the Huskies will take over. Nearly picked off, Bobby. Absolutely great defensive play. But if I could turn my attention again to Mr. Jordan and, and this building. You know, I know that one of Jim's goals is to be Chicago's football team. I don't think there's any question that Northern Illinois is Chicago's football team. And this, what you've brought here, as David Kaplan said, I've been all over the country doing football games and coaching. This is as good as any and better than most. What a source of pride for you and your family. Uh, we have a, a real good friend who is a, uh, a scholarship athlete at Wisconsin who walked through the building today and said that he certainly didn't see anything in the Big Ten that, that rivaled this. So I certainly agree with you. And, and you know, the bottom line, it's about the student athletes. And, you know, to say, and this is a cliche, obviously your heart's in the right place, but a lot of direction had to come and a lot of vision from this young guy here, Jim Phillips, Dr. Jim Phillips, who, you know, when you came, when he first came to Northern Illinois, your relationship, and, and again, the vision and the foresight to have something like this. Uh, absolutely. I, I actually wasn't on campus for over 30 years and uh, met Jim and his staff and, and the coaches and got to know the people. Uh, it was, uh, it, it was, it wasn't exactly love at first sight. It took a while, but it was, it was there. Kendrick Young is the Saluki that's down. We will have more. We'll talk more about the building. We'll talk more with these two gentlemen, David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Kenny McReynolds with you here in DeKalb. Huskies by 17. Southern Illinois. Now we invite you to the new Mackey's of Marion. Same amazing food, gorgeous new surroundings. Mondays are family night at Mackey's of Marion. Get a one topping 16 inch pizza, combination salad for four, and a pitcher of soda for only $17. For lunch, for dinner, for more than just a meal, it's Mackey's Pizza. Hitting the road. It's something the Glottich family has helped customers do since 1946. The family's key to local business success is to work hard, have a good product, and be fair to people. Banteros shares that belief. That's why Banteros has been the Glottich's bank for 60 years. My dad's first bank book. In fact, when it comes to financing our local businesses, Bantera is number one. Bantera, banking with local style. Come experience one of the top three golf courses in Illinois. Designed by Steve Smyers, a world-renowned golf course architect. Coco Pelli Golf Club's scenic 18-hole course offers a picturesque and relaxing golf experience. Ball game, and looks no worse for the wear as he helps move the chains. That is a Husky first down at the 11.45 mark. Jim, we, you took me on the tour through the building, and we, I kidded you. I said, well, I can't believe I'm in DeKalb. That building is amazing. But what it does is, when a coach, I'm a former coach, Bob's a former coach, you go into a home and you talk to a student athlete and their parents, and you show them that, it talks about the level of commitment from the university academically. Absolutely, David. You and Bob have been around college football a long time. You must reinvest in your organization, and for us, it's an investment in our student athletes. And you need to do that from an academic as well as an athletic perspective. And that building captures that reinvestment in their futures. Nicholson hands to Justin Anderson. He goes nowhere. Knocked down at the 50. Away from the impact of the building, it's the aesthetics of the building are unbelievable. Because I said to Bob, I love watching the extra points get kicked up into the building on the deck and people up there catching the football and the view when you have a long camera shot, it's amazing. It is amazing. Several of the kids told us when the building opened on August 1st, I feel like I've transferred to another institution. <laughs> and they had the hugest smiles on their face. And I know what they were saying. They were saying they love Northern Illinois University, but when you have a, a building like that. Different level. It is a different level. You're exactly right. A second and 12, Nicholson's going to throw, and it's picked off, and that one may be going to the house. Yes, it is. Touchdown, Southern Illinois, and they are right back in it. Brandon Williams, 5'9", quarterback, with blazing speed, 
read it and took it to the house. Well, David, early on I told you about a very high, high problematic passes and that's one there. You throw it to the flat in man coverage, he gets a great break on the ball, shows great athleticism, shows great speed. A lot of times that weak flat, flat is a high percentage pass, but if it's not, that ball a lot of times will go in the opposite direction. Great athleticism. We got a football game on our hands here. 52 yards. They will try and cut it to a 10 point game. Snap, kick, good. Extra point is perfect. We'll take a timeout. 10 30 to go. The coach is right. We got a ball game going here in DeKalb. Doctor recommended specialized care at Southern Illinois Orthopedic Center. The MRI indicated that I had suffered a spine injury. The spine specialist and staff provided me with detailed one-on-one -on -one care before, during, and after my surgery. I was even able to rehabilitate at SIOC's Physical Therapy and Rehab Center. My recovery was quick, and I feel like myself again. State-of-the-art orthopedic care, close to home. The Southern Illinois University Foundation Presenting the Opportunity Through Excellence campaign for Southern. I performed pretty much all of the positions on the production crew. I did camera, I did teleprompter. The hands-on experience, you can't beat it anywhere. Alumni should support and give back because it's about paying it for it. It's about helping out other students just as you've been helped, you know, along your way. Information available at siuf.org slash campaign. World Grand Champion Barbecue is just down the street at 17th Street Bar and Grill in Murfreesboro. If you love barbecue as much as we do, then 17th Street is the place. Come on in for our famous slow-cooked ribs, barbecue, steak, seafood, chicken, burgers, salads, and homemade desserts. You will want to try everything. We have catering, too. Want it to go? Just call ahead and we'll have your food ready. Come on in. We're waiting for you. At 17th Street Bar and Grill. Rose, as Bob said, a dangerous out route looking for Britt Davis, and that young man's got wheels. Brandon Williams, 5'9", 180-pound sophomore, South Plantation, Florida, South Plantation High School. I mean, look at the right side of your screen right there, and you see a man who's, you know, thrown two passes, to, uh, two interceptions tonight, both of them for touchdowns. He'll learn a lot off of this game as he progresses. I am still impressed with the maturity that he's shown right from the on start of this game to right now. You know, another day, another week, he won't make those throws. He'll know when to pull back and take the football and go up the field with it. SIU will kick it to either Evans Adonis or Greg Turner. And it's going to come down to Evans Adonis at the five. He brings it up to the 20, breaks a tackle, goes up the sideline and knocked down right around the 36 or 37 yard line. Govan made the tackle. Take a look again at a very good return by Evans Adonis. One of the things you ask a return team, you don't ask them to go down and make pancake blocks. Just get a hat on a hat. Just buy a little bit of time for that running back to make, make, make plays, make the plays himself. You're not gonna knock guys down. You're not gonna pancake block on kickoffs. Two interceptions returned for touchdowns in the same game for SIU. First time in 22 years, since 1985. This is a huge series for the Huskies right now. There's no doubt about it. Take time off the clock, move the football. Right now, I stay with the running game, David. I, I, I really do. I stay with the running game. It's been, it, it's been very rewarding throughout the entire game. Keep running that football. Granted, you've got two great running backs on the bench right now because of, because of injuries, but that offensive line has been stalwart. They've played really well. This Eddie Adamski, I don't know if I had a call from him tonight, 6'2", 282 pounds sophomore. Boy, does he get out? Oh, does he get out? I mean, you talk about big guys, athletic guys, and, and that's what Joe Novak has done. He's been uh, great football players, but right down the line, they possess great athleticism. And as you prepare for this game, team captain, National Honor Society, team captain, National Honor Society, don't think that that's not part of Joe Novak's recruiting model. Nicholson hands it off, Justin Anderson, he slips and is belted down. It's gonna bring up a third and 10 now, loses a couple of yards. 
Brandon Jordan, the Saluki's inside linebacker, had a middle great linebacker. Night. He had a great night. Great night, and he is an undersized young man. And that's a philosopher as an inside linebacker. And that's a defensive philosophical idea. 5'11, 215 pounds. He's from John Curtis Christian. And that's Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana. Talk about a high school with a huge, huge football tradition. And he's a fly around guy with a little timeout going on right now. Two. The Salukis, David. The Salukis take, I believe, their first timeout of the second half. Jerry Kill does not look like he's very happy to burn that timeout at this at this time. If, if I may get real quick back to Mr. Uh, Jordan, one of the things that are very, there's a weight room, there's meeting rooms. Well, you know what's very impressive to me? The study hall areas, all those computer like terminals. The medical facilities. Yes. And and, and that's what the complete athlete's about, student athlete. To see those computers, to see the place where the tutor is at, that is so important, and I think that really plays into the strengths of Coach Joe Novak. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's uh, computer abilities for about 65 students. Uh, there's tutoring. We have uh, full-time staff to, to help them. Uh, a lot of emphasis on, uh, on academics. Wonderful. See if we can't keep this drive alive right here, third and nine. Nicholson drops back. He's got time. He's looking, looking, rolls, and he's going down. Going down, sacked by Devon Reese. This is a situation where he has to show the maturity. Pull the football down. Don't take that sack in the red zone. Never take that sack in the red zone. Frank Turner, the deep man on the field here now from Andy Dittbenner. Devin Reese. Devin Reese made a play there. You know, that's what I call a rocky guy. The play like is basically over, but he kept coming and coming and coming. Dittbenner gets it away. It's a high driving kick will come down right around the 25-yard line. Touched his knee down, David, as he fielded Touched it. Touched his knee ball. as he fielded it, so they will start at the 25. We will take a timeout. 8.09 left. Huskies by 10. Don't go anywhere. Saluki Athletics would like to thank Cook Portable Warehouses for their continuing support. Cook Portable Warehouses offers a variety of options and features to meet your specific needs. Check us out online at cookportablewarehouses.com. Cook Portable Warehouses, when you need room for your stuff. The Southern Illinois University Foundation, presenting the Opportunity Through Excellence campaign for Southern. I plan to support Southern because I can't deny the, the way that this has prepared me for my future. The opportunities that I have, that I'm looking at now, probably wouldn't be available had I not had the experience that I gained here. So that's why I will be a strong supporter of Southern. In Welcome back to Husky Stadium. David Kelly, we are joined for your he and his
Bradley is the you on this play, but it looked like his knee touched down. The original this play will stay in this call. There was no way his foot touched down as I saw. It. Look here, great work by our. Close. How to determine where you lost control of the football is going to be critically important. A little shake. Turns his back. Oh. How about this angle? You know, the officials in the way. The knee is down, but we can't see where the football is from that angle. It has to be inconclusive now. It has to be completely conclusive evidence to overturn the call exactly. on the field. The one thing I like, I wish it would go to a total NFL model. You know, if if the decision is made in, in a quickly and a prudent amount of time, I don't mind it. But I've done a couple games this year where we've stood there and stood there and stood there. And, you know, and all of a sudden, the momentum of the game and, and everything else. Take a look at it. Get a good look at it. And get the call. Right. Put a clock on it or allow a challenge-type system until late in the ballgame when it can be a game-breaker. This one here looks like it's going to take just a little bit of time. I think that one shot that we saw, and David, am I correct in assuming this is the, what we see here is what the, the gentlemen... The same exact feed that, they yeah, see. that they've seen. So they'll review this time and time again. You know, as I remember, when I came here, that in, to coach here with Coach Corso, that bleach around that side never even existed. It was basically a kind of a fundamental high school feel from that side. And, and Jim, we've been friends uh, for a long time. In, in an all candor, being a Chicago guy, a Weber High School guy, basically in a lot of ways a neighborhood guy it, when it comes right down to it, doctorate or not. Did you did, did you have an eye towards this job early on? Uh, uh, this is a beautiful institution, you know, and I tell this publicly. I feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to go to this athletics department, and uh, um, we're trying to do everything provide our student athletes with a world-class experience. Bob, you love the city of Chicago. I know you do. My so father well. is my hero. He's 92 years old. He still lives in the same house. He raised 10 children, six girls and four boys. And uh, the old saying, you can, you can take the boy out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the boy. And uh, I'll always be very fond and passionate about the city of Chicago. Boy, Jerry Kill is Jerry, furious. And is I think furious. that means the ball's going to the Huskies, yeah. and it is. Jerry is. Kill is living. He better be careful or there will be a penalty flag thrown on him. He's being restrained by his coaches. He is furious. They, uh, Jim, obviously this Jordan Center, I mean, my goodness. But yet at the same time, I remember the first time I came to visit you in the basketball arena, I had never seen that. I mean, when you take this facility and combine it with that basketball facility, you have very little equals in state or anywhere else. Justin Anderson gets it down to the 35-yard line. You know, everybody talks about scheduling right now. What precipitated this game with Southern Illinois being a quote-unquote subdivision team? Well, uh, when I took the job over three years ago, I missed the first season. The second game uh, of the 2004 season, we played Southern Illinois. It was the same kind of electric atmosphere, full stands, Great rivalry, etc. We're going to continue to play SIU. It just makes sense. They, they have game. a great history and tradition. Terrific Jerry Kill, terrific athletic director in Mario Mokwa, and we're going to continue this series regardless of what the outcome is tonight. Justin Anderson rips off a big run inside the 25, and the clock drips under 6:40. And we will say goodbye to Jeffrey Jordan. Jim, thank you for being here, gentlemen, and good luck. Appreciate it very much. Let me just tell you guys, we love the relationship with Comcast Sportsnet. You guys are the very best in the business. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for, Thanks having, for us. having us. You know, you're you're giving these running backs all these calls, Mr. Kaplan, but I'm going to tell you something. Acevedo, Mayor Brock, Eddie Adamski, and then at number 65, Jason, Jason Onibuaku. These guys are doing a great job up front. Great push. Big push up front.
Just doing this, the ball game wears on. We're talking about a 310, 312, 282, 310, 304. These are big bodies that have had to perform time and time again. Hats off to the strength and conditioning coach here at, in, in, in the Orton Center at Husky football. This football is in great shape. And, and the other people also. Let's, let's, listen, I understand, you know, we're here with, with uh, Dr. Phillips and Jordan and that. So you know the Salukis, they've come in here. They are, they are a fly-around football team. They also they are. They are. Jerry Kill does a wonderful job. This club ranked in the top five over four straight weeks. Nicholson, and up. Justin Anderson picks his way. Justin Anderson nearing the 15-yard line. They'll call it the 17-yard line. Once again, an outstanding job by the offense. A hat on a hat. A guy on a guy. You see them aren't that great. A little bit of patience. You take that football single right now. No chance with that type of football. Your patience. Put your feet a little bit. Look to the inside. Third down first. and two for the Huskies. This is my kind of football, David. Another hand, and that will be close to another. The ball given by Justin Anderson. Anderson. If it's Now we invite you to the new Mackey's of Marion. Same amazing food, gorgeous new surroundings. Come to Mackey's and Marion for the Wednesday beer bargain. One dollar off domestic and imported bottles with the purchase of any pizza. For lunch, for dinner, for more than just a meal, it's Mackey's Pizza. When I injured my knee during practice, my coach referred me to Southern Illinois Orthopedic Center. They're the primary orthopedic provider for all Saluki athletes. The MRI revealed a torn ACL, but it was corrected with outpatient surgery at SIOC Surgery Center. Afterwards, I worked with specialists at the on-site physical therapy and rehab center, and I was back on the court just in time for our first game. State-of-the-art orthopedic care, close to home. And Nick Hill hit his man in straight and he dropped it. Damian Jackson dropped the just a little looking in. We want to see what a wide receiver. 
to the football and put, pop your head down. The football is secured in your middle. His man short. That's all he had. There was great coverage deep. Seconds left. There it is. And we'll see. This call incomplete. And that's a good call by these officials. I think these officials have done a really good job this evening controlling the football game. Jerry Kill was shot. not happy with him no, earlier. He's not. They didn't take that shot downfield that way. Going to bring up a second and ten situation. There is a look at Jerry Kill. Well, this is what. Coach and your assistant coach, and sure, I mean, you're in the heat of battle and everything, but Jerry Kill's been there long enough to know, he's been a head coach long enough to know that you know, you're still cooler heads prevail. Hill looking, looking over the middle, finds his man. He'll gain maybe four. Phil Goforth made the catch, big tight end. 6'1", 200 yards, 200 pounder, excuse me, wide receiver, Tranchatella made the hit. Up by the Husky defense of keeping the football inside the perimeter. A lot of pressure. the perimeter of the defense. And Nick Hill throws it away. Lots of pressure by Northern Illinois, led by Tranchatella. You're gonna see here. And Jake Kaufman. Hill's gonna flush. In other words, he's going to get outside the pocket and try to make something happen. Try to get an entire panorama of the whole field and hope that the Huskies have, made, have had made a mistake in the secondary of busted coverage because basically that's all he's going to have left in that situation. Big play here, Bob. This could be the ball game right here. A fourth and six near midfield. Hill rolling to his left, throws and got his man and moved the sticks. First down, Southern Illinois. Phil Goforth, the wide receiver, makes a big catch. Great throw by Nick Hill under duress. Nick Hill has showed a great deal of poise and a great deal of athleticism in the, in the game, especially in, in a series like this with his back to the wall, fighting the clock. Nice job by this young man. That ball tipped around and nearly intercepted. Was that true? Driscoll Catholic High School, Edison, Illinois. 3.5 student. He has five older brothers. You think he's a tough guy? How about it? Good job of getting his hand up there. Good athleticism. You know, linebackers years ago didn't play football that athletically. They were pluggers and things. This young guy right here, 6 feet, 221, he's only a sophomore. High upside. SIU now three of four on fourth down. Pretty good productivity with the game on the line. This time a much better snap. Hill's been dealing with some bad snaps. He goes down the field and misses his man. It goes out of bounds. Alan Turner, who caught that big touchdown on fourth down earlier in the ball game from 26 yards out, 
was the intended receiver. Turner needs to get his head around when he's running a pattern like that. Throws that, you know, we used to call it dead in the hole. In other words, you're going to tell the wide receiver, this ball is going to be underthrown. Drive the corner off. I'm going to underthrow the football, and look back to me, and then come back and make the catch. Tommy Looks like Waddle, who's done a lot of these games with yeah. me as well, he was a master at this. It's better if you're slower. He was slow. Great hands, though. Hill it off. Finds his man. And that will be enough for, I believe, and nope, they'll be short of a first down. Deji Kareem, brought down by Larry English. The Northern Illinois defense has seen everything in this game, everything. Jerry Kill has went to the playbook and then some. Fourth and two, another big play here for Southern Illinois. Hill throws, he's got his man, another first down. They are four of five on fourth down. Hill has a strong arm. That was a, that was a great throw. Good strength. Looked one way, went through his progression, put the ball right on the money. A deep up from the opposite half. That's a big time throw. This play will be blown dead. Let's see what we've got here. With a buck 11 left. Nobody really has left him. No, I was about to say that, David. I think this is a good, this is what you do. Come on the sideline, regroup, call a timeout. You know, I want to say something Time about out Northern Illinois. I, that's their second. Second. Nick Hill, 6'3", 210, DeCorin, Illinois High School. Athletic, he can run. What his major is, wants to be a special education teacher. And to me, that echoes unbelievable character. Because special education teachers in this day and age. A lot of character. A lot of character. My hat is off to this young man. Definitely my hat is off to him. We have some numbers on that man right there, Joe Novak. Look at those numbers. From 96 through 99, he was 8 and 36. And there were calls for, is he the guy? Kerry Growth, the old athletic director, said, yes, he is, along with President Peters. From 2000 through 2007, look at those numbers when he got a chance to build a program. He's won a bowl game in close to the year. He's gone to another bowl game and a 63% winning percentage. There was a great call for him to remain here as head football coach when Coach Mallory left. He was Coach Mallory's That's defensive correct. coordinator. They brought in Lee he went Corsa. to the Cal Bowl. Coach Mallory went to Indiana, took Joe with them. Job came up a couple other times and finally got the job. And, and lucky for Northern. And they had an open receiver and they missed him. Fourth had a touchdown and they couldn't find it. By the way, I want to do a uh, we'll take a look at the replay first. The ball's going to be thrown over the wrong shoulder. Good route, good break, no help over the top. Needed to throw that football with a little bit more air under it to the outside shoulder away from the defender. Ran into a good friend that play uh, baseball still in the 35 and over league, and one of the guys on our team, one of the great baseball players in Northern Illinois history, a guy named Paul Chief. Watching the game at home tonight, cheering on his beloved Huskies. And that is going to be a Southern Illinois touchdown, and they have life. Ryan Kearns, the 10, finds the end zone, and they are an extra point away from being three down with a minute to go. This has to be a total busted coverage. The free safety had to be over the top on that. Well, that ball's tipped. I believe that ball's tipped. Even still, Alex, you have to be the fielder. That's the reason that you are back there. We'll get another look at that after the extra point. And I believe, Bobby, that that ball was tipped. 26-yard touchdown, 15-play drive, 84 yards. It took 305. Onside kick, obviously upcoming after the PAT. Snap, set, he got. So it's a three point game. Give a lot of credit to Jerry Kills Club. No quit in this team. Down 31 10, they've roared back, and you'll see it. It's tipped right there. It was tipped by the wide receiver. I 
don't I, you know what I think happened David I think the wide receiver short-handed the ball because he was not the primary receiver and he sees the tight end or gets a feel for the tight end Kearns Kearns catches the football and he's upfield you still need free safety help over the top tip or not I couldn't tell whose hand got in there it was the wide receiver David coming across the middle I think you're on right a, on a crossing route it looked like he wanted do I catch it or don't I catch it? Is it being thrown to me or is it being thrown to Kearns to tight end? I believe it me? was Goforth. Phil Goforth, number 88, I think is the man that got a hand on it and directed it into Ryan Kearns' hands. And the tight end rumbles 26 yards. And it's a three point ball game. Well, now Northern Illinois has the hands team out there. What is the hand team? Everybody on the football team, with the coaches being, have the ability athletic ability to field the football cleanly, the hands team. You like to kick a low onside kick or kick it high up in the air? I want the kicker to kick the football so it drifts, 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 and then bounces high. And it does, and it's loose, and I believe that Southern Illinois recovered it. Yes, they have. Clayton Johnson, number 36, recovers the onside kick, and SIU has the football. This is a situation where you kick the ball in the air and have the lead man go and block the intended receiver. You're gonna see that, boom, right there, see him? He blocked the intended receiver and the man behind him trails to get the football. As soon as, as, soon as the receiving team went up in the air for the football, Bamo, he got hit by one of the Salukis and then the trailing man recovered the football. I didn't get all those numbers there, David, but Preston that's exactly Williams what was the intended receiver, and he got absolutely lit up. First and ten, SIU has two timeouts left. Nick Hill, senior quarterback, throws. Nope, he tucks it, and he is tackled near midfield by Craig Rush, number 99. Almost lost the handle on the football there. Timeout salute. Just getting ready to throw it. He tucks it and runs. Timeout SIU. They've got one left. 51.8 left. We got a whale of a ball game here, Bobby C. You know, you, the term we used in football the years, the ebb and flow of the game. If there was ever an ebb and flow that went from one side to the other side, back to the other side, it's this. There's Denny Dornboss right there, Western Michigan graduate, gathering his defense around. And now you see, obviously, on the other side of the field, Jerry Kill talking to his guy. Now you got the little chess match. You know, they haven't seen enough of each other. They've only played one of the, what do you see? Or what, is there a tendency or isn't there a tendency? You know what, this is where you tell the Huskies, play, play the course, not the opponent. Play sound football. And Jerry Kill, his guy's the same way. Nick Hill, looking, looking, throws, it's incomplete. Melvin Rice in coverage. He was looking, I believe, for Byron Geddes. Melvin Rice all over the, the, the receiver. This young guy, you talk about a, a great break on the football. You know, because is he gonna drive me off the ball? Is he gonna choke his motor down? Is he gonna come back? Good secondary coaches talk about driving on the football. In choke other words, his no, motor down. Choke his motor down. You choke his motor down, you bite on it, single. He's behind you. Bad snap. He scoops it up off the ground. He's pressured. Drag finds his man, Deshi Kareem. But he is short of a first down. It will bring up the ball game. Fourth down. This is Southern Illinois' final timeout. He got rid of it, and there's Tranchatella, who makes the tackle uh, with an assist to Bradley Pruitt. Had, uh, again, salute this Nick Hill guy. Larry English was all over him. He was stretching his shirt, pulling his pads right off of his shoulder. This young guy has shown a great deal of presence. They have to be so proud of the game that he's played this evening. This is it, David. To our Chicago audience watching on Comcast Sportsnet in Chicago, as soon as this one's over, we will toss it to the Pac-10 game, Colorado at Arizona State, joining it in progress. 
fourth and three. This is the ball game. Hill looking, goes down the field and has his man. And that will be enough for a first down and they are at the 30 yard line. Ryan Kearns, the man who scored the touchdown moments ago, makes the big catch in the middle of the field. Hill looking, all kinds of time, down the field, got his man, touchdown, Southern Illinois. They have stunned Northern and taken the lead. Justin Allen made the catch. I will tell you once again, David, once again, this Nick Hill has had an unbelievably special performance in the comeback of the Saluki football team. He has showed me a lot. Senior quarterback with just tremendous poise and a great arm. Great word right there. Great, great poise. He has silenced, silenced the crowd. Five plays, 57 yards, a 30-yard touchdown. Took 36 seconds. Extra point is good. No, sorry, it is wide right. So that will be a key miss. Pushed it just outside the right upright. We'll take a look again at the touchdown. Good protection, good blitz pickup. Again, once again, come over the top. The free safety has to come over the top. Rice, as you know, I mentioned choked your motor down. He choked his motor down just a little bit there. Just enough, just enough for the defender to get behind him. That's a play where you defend the end zone. Don't go for the interception. Defend the end zone, defend the score. Don't take a chance down there. Jeff Fontana, number 32, was the free safety who was a little late getting over the top to give some help to Melvin Rice. You've heard me use this term, a defensive term, time and again, inside and in front. If the ball is inside and in front of you, you've got a chance to defend the first down, you've got a chance to defend the touchdown. What a huge miss on the extra point wow. that curled around the outside of the right upright because now a field goal, you have an All-American field goal kicker, you have one timeout, and you got a quarterback that can throw the football. Oh, they'll just have to come out, spread the field. They'll have to go to, to, to a no huddle also. Huskies with one timeout left. You know, you knew in this football game, this is Jerry Kill, he, you know, he, as I said before, he's been around, he's challenged for national championships. And the kick will be taken and handed off. Northern Illinois with a little trickery and they'll get the ball out at the 20 yard line with just 12 seconds left. That is the huddle where everybody comes to the ball carrier. He hands the ball to someone and they break out. You're looking for deception. You're looking to try to make something happen. That's Greg Turner left. you see walking off the field. 12 seconds left with one timeout and they are 80 yards from a game-winning touchdown. They've got to, Bob, what would you say, get the ball somewhere around the 35 to give him a 52-yard try to tie the game? Well, here's where you have to do one. You start throwing out routes, deep outs, everything, getting to step out of bounds before you use that timeout. And you'll see right three deep across the back for the Salukis in a fundamental prevent defense. Nicholson, pressured, looking down the field, throws, finds Turner, he goes out of bounds at the 36 yard line. They'll call it the 35 yard line with 5.3 left. Very well the last play of the game. That one took just about seven seconds, a little less than seven seconds. I mean, unbelievable completion to this game. I mean, and credit to Salukis. I mean, just kept coming back and coming back and coming back. The law is gonna have to get, in, get into meetings and things and think a little bit about what they're doing defensively. He'll go down the field, and it is intercepted, and the ball game is over. Southern Illinois has roared back from 31 to 10 down and stunned the Huskies here tonight in DeKalb. The final 34-31. We will be right back with our 
Fatty's Pub and Grill post-game show and wrap this up for you here on Comcast Sports Net.